time to kick off the second season of Inside EKU Sports, the award-winning production of EKU Athletics in its year number 105. For EKU football, Mark Elder joins us and the 85th meeting with Western begins it all. Uh, longer fall camp than normal, no more two a day. She started in late July, but it seems like from what I've seen when I've been out there, a very spirited camp. It has been a great camp. Yeah, we had uh, the guys reported on July 26, so it was a week earlier than it had ever been before. Uh, so it was a long camp. Uh, some of the NCAA rules allowed for it to be bumped up a week, but no doubles this year, a day off, and, and so forth. We had a great camp. Uh, our first goal was we didn't want to have a whole bunch of injuries, so uh, that was accomplished. We had just a couple injuries, nothing major, so we're by and large going into the first game with our team in a very good situation health-wise, which is exciting. With about half the team being new, fresh faces, we wanted to spend a lot of time for those guys clicking and spending time with each other and, and becoming a team, a unit. Uh, really felt, uh, as you said, it was a spirited camp. Uh, the guys, we've grown together as a team, which is great to see. I uh, feel really good about where we're, where we're at leaving fall camp. So how will this team be different than last year's team, in your opinion? Where, where will the difference come? Well, you'll see a lot of fresh faces. I mean, we have about half of our starts back from a year ago. So uh, about half the guys are going to be returning and about half the guys are not. And, and just our overall roster, we've got 121 guys, 120 guys on the roster right now. And, and most of those guys are new guys. I think we have a upper 60, close to 70 guys that are new. So you're going to be seeing an awful lot of new people that didn't play for us last year contributing. Um, we've got a lot more depth, which is which is great. We're going to be green. Uh, we're not going to have a ton of experience as far as guys having uh, – significant playing time and things along those lines, but I like where our talent is. Uh, we just need our guys that are talented enough to play at a high level to play like veterans uh, before they're veterans. So uh, excited about the direction that we're headed. You have two starts against in-state teams that are FBS, so it is a tough beginning to the, the season. What's the message to the kids about what you get out of these first two games? Well, this is a challenging schedule. There's no question about it. It's arguably the most challenging schedule in EKU history. And, and uh, obviously, we've, we start off with Western Kentucky. They're an extremely talented team, a really, really productive team. A year ago, they won 11 games. They won 11 and 3. Uh, their three losses, they were, were close games that they lost in. They, they won their conference, Conference USA, and then they went on to win the bowl game. Uh, they've got a number of guys back, starting with their quarterback, who last year led them to the number one scoring offense in the country. Uh, they've got a lot of talented guys around him returning and some guys that are going to have a, an increased role, but you saw their potential on film. Uh, defensively, they're really good. Number two scoring defense in the country or number two uh, rush defense in the country last year and a lot of guys back from them. So uh, what we're going to get to see is, is we're going to have a, a great opponent right off the get-go and we're going to get to see what we're made of because um, th they're going to be a challenge and they're going to have some good football players on the football field uh, that we have to go against. And, and um, we know it's a traditional rival. We know that there's a whole bunch of people watching and, and um, we're going to get to see what we're made of right from the get go. And that's good. Uh, we're excited about playing a challenging schedule. That's what you want. If you will have high expectations, which we do uh, for this team and for this program, you want to play the best. And so we certainly get an opportunity to play a really, really good team, a very talented team in Western Kentucky right off the get go. So we're going to get uh, pushed and see what we're made of. Mike White is that quarterback. He has 37 touchdowns, only seven interceptions last year. Their defense returns a lot of guys. And the one thing that's just frightening, and I know you'll game plan against it, is their kick and punt returns are the, maybe the best in the country. Yes, um, their special teams are tremendous. Uh, their kick returner last year broke a NCAA record for an individual uh, on average per return. He averaged 40 yards per return last year. He's back. Uh, he was obviously dynamic a year ago. Uh, they scored three touchdowns on punt return a year ago. I think they're ranked third in the country. So they their return game is, is really good, very, very good. And uh, that's going to be a big challenge for us. 
Uh, we take a great deal of pride in our special teams here. So we're going to have to have our A game for those two units. Their punter's back. I think that he's he's really good. He was an all-conference performer a year ago. Uh, he's he's a very, very talented guy. And um, and their field goal kicker's back. So their special teams is loaded. And, and so not only do they have the number one scoring offense in the country, not only do they have a whole bunch of guys back for a defense that uh, was really good, especially down the stretch last year, but their special teams are dangerous. So uh, they're really a complete team, and, and that's good. We're getting challenged in all three phases, and that's what we want. You've named Tim Boyle the starting quarterback transfer from UConn that sat out last year, and I know you have a deep running back core. Uh, we'll see you know wh how this offense goes, but I know you have a lot of confidence in Tim and Adam Scott as well, who battled for the starting uh, spot, spot at quarterback. Yeah, um, really feel good about our quarterback situation. We had a competition all through camp. Uh, didn't name a, a starter until the end of, of camp for us. And, and really it just came down to consistency over time. And Tim was the most consistent performer throughout all of camp. Uh, did a really nice job. He's a tremendous leader. He's got a huge arm, a uh, very intelligent guy. Um, Austin Scott did a really nice job as well, as did all of our guys. But Tim, just through time, uh, proved to be the, the guy at the top of the list there in his consistency and performance. I had the first turnover of the year, did I say Adam? I think I did. You did say Adam. We get, we get to awesome. the turnovers on the show here, not on the field, that's right. right? And that's Absolutely. one thing, real quick, Coach. To try to avoid the turnovers. That was that was a bugaboo last year uh, on pick sixes. Uh, yeah, we we had a lot of turnovers a year ago, and that's been clearly an emphasis of ours, starting. Uh, back in February. I mean, our very first meetings after recruiting was done when, when this is a new team. And, and here, here's the thing, and this is a reality, is this is a new team. This is a different team than a year ago. Um, and, and you'll hear me say that every year. It doesn't matter um, how much we accomplish in one year. The next year, it's a different group of guys in the locker room. It's a different team. And um, every year that's going to be an emphasis for us is, is on offense protecting the football because uh, that's key. That's, that's paramount to our success. And, and defensively, us attacking the football and, and getting the ball back for our offense. So that's been a major emphasis for us all through – the off season, all through fall camp, and and you've seen guys understand how important that is, and obviously we're on display on Saturday, uh, taking care of the ball, showing that, uh, showing what we're capable of. Okay, thanks, Coach. Good luck yeah. in Bowling Green. Thank you very right. much. Starts at seven o'clock uh, Eastern time. We're going to meet one of the Colonel leaders on the football field next. He is also a accomplished person in the classroom. That's Jeff Kennedy. And before that, we'll take a look at the Big E welcome for the class of 2021. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference.
Welcome back to Inside EKU Sports. The Kennedy lineage runs deep in EKU football. Uh, Mark Kennedy and Brent Kennedy, they played in the late 80s, early 90s, and now Eastern Kentucky has a senior linebacker, now graduate student, in Jeff Kennedy. And Jeff joins us. Jeff, uh, you always a Colonel fan because of your uncles? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's family tradition. Um, growing up, that's all we talked about. Uh, came to games, you know. It's just, it's, it's in the blood, like you said. This is your fifth year, uh, already have your degree. You're a, one of the captains on defense along with Kobe Grace. Uh, what's the sense after fall camp that what this team will be compared to last year's team? I feel like only we can set our boundaries. You know, um, right now we're focused on getting better each day, being better the next day than we were previous day. Um, I think, like I said, we can only cap ourselves. There's not a team on our schedule that can't beat us and there's not one that we can't beat, you know. So I think it's up to us to keep grinding, keep getting better. Um, coming out of fall camp, you know, defense looked really good early. Offense came on late, um, but throughout the whole whole thing, we made each other better. So you had an environmental health science degree, got that in May, now in graduate school. So what's the future from Jeff Kennedy? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna train after the season. You know, do a pro day. If I get lucky, then pursue that. But if not, um, I'm gonna keep getting my master's in safety, and then I plan to get my doctorate in industrial hygiene. Maybe be a professor down the line. Uh, just, just try to figure it out as I go, I guess. You have been a district academic All-America, so you're, you're a prime example of mixing academics and athletics and <clears throat> using both to help the other uh, and managing time is a big part of that, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, coming into college, you don't know what to expect. I was, I was nervous, um, which, which I guess is the best, best factor that I had. Um, so coming in, I, I just stayed on top of my on top of my schoolwork, on top of my studies. And then it became a habit. And after year after year, it just became easier and easier. And college is pretty easy. You know, you do, you do what you're told and, and you read the syllabus and do what's on the syllabus, you're gonna do all right. You're gonna make pretty good grades. You're a nominee for the Allstate Good Works team. That, that would be quite an honor. It kind of indicates an, an all around uh, student athlete. Uh, tell me about that honor. Oh, it, like you said, it's an honor, yeah. you know. Um, we try to do a lot in the community, try to do a lot with uh, people that, that are involved with EQ sports and then some that are not, you know. Um, but just the fact that they recognize me as a candidate is unreal, you know, just doing stuff that I love to do, playing with the, the kids and then helping, helping coach a Special Olympics team, I'll, that'll be a, a very fond memory for the rest of my life, so. Well, your first two games are against teams from the Commonwealth as well. Western on Saturday and then the next Saturday against Kentucky. So a good way to start for a Kentuckian that's now an EKU player and has been now for five years. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's going to be a ton of in-state guys playing in the games. Um, so I feel like the fan bases are going to be, you know, high. You know, I think, I think there's going to be a lot of people traveling for us. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people traveling and going to the games for the other teams. Um, but either way, it's going to be home faces, Kentucky faces, and I can't be more, more excited to do it. All right, Jeff, good luck this season. We're proud of you, both right. in the classroom and on the football field. Uh, what was it, 127 or 37 tackles last year? Something like that. Have, have, yeah. have those and many more this year. That is uh, Jeff Kennedy. He'll be on the field wearing number 53 for the Colonels this year. And when we come back on Inside EKU Sports, we'll give you a look at the new state-of-the-art strength and conditioning center and nutrition bar. Here's a look right now at how that facility is helping student athletes. EKU is the campus beautiful. The school of opportunity, where you are always welcome. And it feels like home. We're changing how we look, but our mission is still the same. To help you expand your knowledge, discover your passion, and unlock your purpose. Be a Colonel. Your time is now.
hit high and deep. Back of the end zone. Brown got it. Moore drives inside, put it up. See this one swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place, anytime. Find it here. The OBC Digital Network. And when the Colonels aren't on the football field, the soccer field, or one of the courts, they have a new strength and conditioning center and nutrition bar. Here's a look at how it's helping student athletes. It's unbelievable just because we were training out of a racquetball court for, uh, for about six weeks there at the beginning of the semester. And, uh, you know, the scheduling was kind of crazy because you, you can only have like 18 people in the room at a time. We run out of space at that point. So, uh, you know, it really helps out with that a lot. Uh, we're able to come in here. We can have three groups training at the same time if we need to. We can have a group starting their warm-up, mobility work on the turf. You can have a whole team lifting in one area, a whole team on the backside, and they never even have to cross pads. So uh, it makes scheduling easier. The flow is amazing. Um, you know, you can step right off the racks, and we can do anything we want over here. We can do some kind of uh, jump. We can do a sled push, something like that. So it just it makes the flow really well, and, again, it just kind of maximizes uh, – the amount of people we can have in here without having to run into scheduling issues. You can already tell when recruits come in, a lot of their parents, um, you know, one of the things I heard was a lot of a lot of parents used to come into our old weight room and uh, kind of look at it like our, our high school weight room is bigger than this, you know. So now they come in here and this is something, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of high schools don't have. So I think it's a, it's a really big upgrade for getting good recruits that come in. It's a, it's a big time eye opener. It's a lot more uniform than it was. We had a lot of different pieces from different companies and stuff like that. Now. You know, everything's hammer strength. Everything looks the same on every single rack. Uh, it's a lot more organized than it used to be. And, you know, it's just it's very appealing to the eye when you walk in here. So one thing we struggle with with a lot of kids is uh, staying up late, sleeping in late, and uh, getting into bad habits where they don't eat. So now we, uh, we kind of uh, help with that a little bit. You know, guys are always going to get a post-workout uh, shake when they leave here. So what we're doing is kind of teaching them the importance of putting that protein and getting those carbs back in your body right after you work out. Uh, you know, to make sure we start that rebuilding process and uh, get energy back in your muscles so you can go about your day, go to class, go to practice, whatever else you have to do. So again, it's not like we're, uh, it's not a meal replacement by any means. We still want to teach them those good habits, but we're starting to teach them more about the importance of nutrient timing, when they need to be taking this stuff in, and uh, just getting calories back in their bodies because, you know, a lot of coaches around here, our practices are very, very fast paced, very intense. So we want to make sure we're maintaining our body weights where they need to be too. Don't forget the first game of the season, Saturday, down in Bowling Green for Eastern at Western. It begins at 7 o'clock Eastern time. If you can't be there, tune in on WCYO 100.7 FM or on the Internet at EKUSports.com. And there is a live stream at FlowFootball.com. And always keep up with EKU Sports wherever you are. Like and follow our channels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for joining us on Inside EKU Sports. We'll see you again next week.